Pack a bow, my friend And don't forget to pass the plan Pack it up, my friend And then we'll ride up and we'll smoke in the ashes in the end Pack a bow, my friend me that blend, would you? Welcome back in, y'all. It's good to see you. Um, it's been a couple weeks. Uh, there's a reason for that. <laughs> uh, so as, uh, well, first off, I hope the beginning of your year has started off really well i do wish that for each and every one of you uh but um back to why i haven't done a video in a couple weeks so i did a live there on uh new year's eve and um everything was fine everything was good uh, i got done with my live it was interesting um i may try to do it again um it was fun to be able to chat with y'all, those that participated in the chat area. A number of people chimed, you know, got in on, on the live, but not everybody chatted. That's fine, I understand. But it is nice to be able to chat in real time with people. Um, had a good experience there. Uh, but after I got done with that, <clears throat> I was going to go into, well, and I did go into my craft room and was working on some projects. And I went ahead and brought up Yusef's video. He was going to be coming up live. So, um, you know, checking out Yusef's video. And I sat there working on a project. Um, I'll show it to you here in a little bit. And my body just started to ache. And I thought, is it the chair I'm sitting in? Because I don't have a very comfortable chair in my uh, craft room. And I thought, man, is it, is it this chair? I don't know. And uh, I started to get the chills really bad. And uh, it started aching, of course. And I said, oh, shit. Here we go. I'm getting the Rona. Uh, influenza A. Um, flu. I got the full-blown flu. It was happening. And I walked out to my wife, said, okay. I said, I know the drill. Uh, I'm getting ready to get sick here real quick. It's happening. And before the end of the night, y'all, I was just on the couch, bundled up, just couldn't get warm, aching all over the place. I said, well, there you go. This is how we're going to start the year. Well, let's get this out of the way. Let's just get it out. <laughs> uh, once I, you know, Once you have a good flu, you're usually good for the rest of the year. So I said, okay, let's just start this year off this way, get it done, get it gone, and we'll be good. <clears throat> so, yeah, I uh, basically my body shut down. I started pumping all my measures that I do, y'all, my quinine, and all the little things that I personally do when I start to get sick. You know, things I probably should have been done doing prior to it as a prophylactic, but I didn't. I told myself in November, I said, you know, I need to start pumping my vitamin C and zinc and uh, my quinine that I make and colloidal silver and things of that nature. But I didn't. You know, sometimes when you're not sick, you don't think about taking action uh, for if you do get sick. I mean, who wants to think about that stuff, y'all? Who wants to think about getting sick? Um, but I went ahead, started pumping everything I needed. I went to bed and I did not wake up until somewhere the next day in the afternoon. Uh, got out of bed, just all achy. Anyways, y'all know the drill. I was sick, y'all. And um, the whole week, uh, I, tr I was going to work every day. And that was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. Because all I did was prolong uh, the flu that I had. Uh, but evidently a number of guys at work had gotten it and they were hurting. Uh, and so of course they were glad to see I was there, even though I was just as sick as anybody else who stayed home. 
But that's why I didn't do a video. Yeah, but that's out of the way now. Feeling 100% better. We're all good to go. And uh, got that out of the way. Kiss that shit goodbye. <laughs> and let's start this year, shall we? Uh, today, y'all, I am smoking a Christmas gift. Now, I showed this to y'all on the live, but some of you may not have seen it. Um, that my wife got for me. It is a an estate pipe. Um, and it is made by Ben Wade. Ben Wade. I did a little research, and uh, they're no longer in business. They were in business for a long while. Um, <clears throat> in and out. Got sold off to a couple people. The last people they got sold off to was Dunhill. There in England. And I think they made the pipe there for a little while. Um, and I, I don't believe they make them anymore. If I, From what I read. Correct me if I'm wrong, y'all. Uh, I don't know how old this pipe is. I couldn't find out uh, anything on the internet as to whether or not this pipe right here, uh, how old it might have been. Um, but, uh, hey, regardless, it's fun. Cleaned it up really well, even though it's got ghosting going on real bad in this pipe, y'all. Somebody was... The person who owned this pipe prior to myself really loved something that was vanilla. <laughs> I'll tell you that. It's ghosting real hard in this pipe. I Pretty much, it's worked its way out. Um, I went through all the procedures to, to clean an estate pipe and get it prepped for my collection. Um, but, I don't know, I think this one here was just so deeply embedded with the previous tobacco that this pipe was used to smoking must have been dedicated to one brand because uh, it was deep in the briar. Uh, but I think uh, by now I've had a number of bowls through it and it seems to be working its way out and we're doing fine. In the bowl today, uh, actually doing a little bit of mixture uh, this morning before I took off to uh, go to a friend's house, um, I took uh, Folklore. Cornell, Cornell and Deal's folklore, and mixed in a little bit of the Carolina Red Flake. Mixed it all up in my little Peterson's tobacco pouch. Thinking about trying to make some of these, y'all. If I can find an insert that they used. But mixed it all up and uh, been smoking that all day. And still in, in this bowl now, right now, is that uh, mixture of folklore and Carolina Red Flake. I think they go well together, personally. Um, but anyways, yeah, I was thinking about in the future trying to make tobacco pouches. Real simple to make. But they've got a special liner on the inside. Um, and uh, I got to find out where I get this liner. I thought about just using plain old leather. Um, but it, it, it looks like it'd be a good idea to have a liner on the inside. But you, I don't think you can have just any old liner. This is a very thick, like, plastic or something. Um, I'll have to do some more research and see about it. Because uh, I think it'd be neat to, to make some of these tobacco pouches and give them away. Real convenient to put in your wrap and um, use this versus throwing a big tin of something you know, into your, into your wrap, um, or, you know, a plastic baggie works, but a nice little tobacco pouch, uh, would work better, right? Um, anyways, let me get this lit up. We've got a small char light going on, but we'll get it lit up. So this is the first estate pipe. Uh, technically it's the second. This is the real, the first estate pipe I got. I knew the person uh, when I got it from my, my friend. Uh, it was 10 years old, 15 years old. Uh, but, um, and I knew it. So it's technically this could be my, my, my first real estate pipe. 
this Ben Waite. <clears throat> and so far, I really like it. Very large bowl, very deep bowl. I would compare it to the bowl size of a Peterson house pipe. Um, Peterson house pipes are very large bowls. Um, thus the name house pipe. You basically pack that thing and sit back in the house for a long while uh, and smoke. I don't have one, uh, but I know people that do. And they're very deep bowls, very big bowls um, to accommodate a lot of tobacco. I would say this is about the same size if I had to guess, because it's a very large bowl, I'd say 22 millimeters, and probably at least uh, 38 to 40 millimeters deep, I think. I don't have my tool here to measure it, but um, very large pipe, very good uh, briar, nice, nice uh, markings in the briar, not too much bird's eye, you got some bird's eye here and there, uh, but it's a very nice pipe, y'all. Square shank. My first one of these. Never had a square shank. So when I make a stem for this, I'm going to have to uh, learn how to make them square. And, you know, I like this stem, but I'll probably make a new stem for it. Um, even though this is the Ben Wade st stem that came with this pipe, I can tell because it's stamped on the side. Uh, but... There, it's it's got a tar line that's stained um, in the middle of this thing so badly that no matter how much I scrubbed, I could not get it out. And you can see the tar line right there. Um, and I scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed. Used certain cleaners. It just ain't coming out. I think it's permanently stained. Uh, the lucite or the acrylic. I'm not quite sure. If this is lucite or acrylic, basically the same stuff, but it stained it. So I may make a new one. I may stay with an orange theme. I don't know. We'll find out in the future. Yeah, but that folklore is good on its own. Um, good Perique blend, and then uh, that Carolina Red Flake, which also has Perique, mix that together a little bit in my pouch there, and uh, I think they go well together. How many of y'all do that out there? You take blends and think this would taste good with this, and you put it together. I'm sure I'm not the only one that does it, y'all. Don't look at me that way. Um, Another thing mama got me, I, yeah, I got it sitting right here. Um, you know, y'all, you know, sometimes our wives, they just, they just do things right, don't they? My wife does a lot of things right. But, uh, she'll be out and she loves to go to antique stores. And that's where she found this pipe. I think she paid $70 for it. The person was pretty firm on the price. And I said, that's, that's fine. 70 bucks for a pipe like this. That's not that's not a bad price. Um, if I do some more research on it, I may find it. It's worth more than that. Who knows? Maybe it's worth less than that. And she got took. I don't know. But in that same antique store, she also found uh, this old tin of uh, <clears throat> smoking tobacco from Union Leader. Now, and it still opens up. Um, yeah, there we go. Still opens up. You can just barely smell like there was ever any tobacco in here. But, um, it, it looks old. Missing some of the paint right here. I don't know how much she paid for it. But she got it at that same antique store. Um, I'll have to do some research. I haven't researched it yet. Uh, does do any of y'all know if they still make Union Leader smoking tobacco? If you do, comment down below. I'd be interested in knowing. Um, but yeah, it doesn't say much on the tin here. Um, it says something company on the side. Pipe and cigarette tobacco. <clears throat> 
anyways it's interesting y'all nice little piece here to put on in the midst of all my stuff here um it's fun and like i said my wife got it for me for christmas and nice little thing to put up here in the midst of all my little cellar going on here um i think i might in the future look for old tins like this uh, to put around um i know a number of presenters have got some really fine collections and uh might be fun to look for the older tins and save them and conversation piece make the little area look good i don't know it's fun But while I was under the weather, when I was feeling decent, I got a little bored. And you all know what happens when I get a little bored. I got in my craft room, started making stuff. And um, I showed you all a number of things on, on New Year's Eve, things that I had made. Uh, and then after that, I made some other things too. But um, I got some pictures to show you. Of some things that I made. Uh, one thing I am giving away, um, and I'll tell you that person I owe this person, and um, we're gonna try it again. Try to get this person, uh, this piece uh, sent to them. And by the way, I did send off uh, the package to France uh, to the trickster. His name is Mike, and. Um, Hopefully he gets that real soon. Um, did find out though that it's a possibility, uh, Mr. Mike, if you're listening, uh, that you'll have to pay an import tax. They warned me uh, that sending things to certain countries, uh, sometimes those countries charge an import tax. And I'm like, it's a gift. Why would you charge a tax on that? I don't know, y'all. Different countries have different rules. There you go. Uh, so it is possible. Um, there you go. But I got a number of things to show you here and um, a few things to talk about uh, before we call this video good. Yeah, that's good stuff. Well, let's get on over here. And I'll show you a few things. So here's a new holster I made for uh, my Sig Sauer um, P365. This is my daily carry. This is what I carry every single day. In fact, it's on my side right now. Um... That is my personal defense that I take everywhere. Um, I can do that here in Texas. I can basically go in every building, uh, everywhere, uh, with this weapon. Not only am I licensed to carry, but it is Texas. We're also uh, constitutional carry. You can open carry here without a license. Technically, you can't conceal carry, but you can open carry anyone. Anyone can here in Texas, um, but anyway, that's my daily that's my daily weapon, and um, I made a new holster for it. Here it is. Um, embellished it a little bit with some alligator on top, and normal uh, seven eight nine. I, mean, I think it was seven eight uh, ounce leather, and then stained it a light brown. Um, right there it's a pancake style holster that's the holsters that i prefer to uh, use and i i carry out i don't carry in um i hate weapons up against my stomach or uh, my back uh, tucked in my pants and it just gets uncomfortable um so I, I i carry out that's the way i do it i know a lot of people like to conceal i just carry out y'all 
Um, I'm aware of my surroundings always, uh, just muscle memory for me. Uh, everywhere I go, I'm aware of everything. So I'm aware if there's some unsavory types that may be around that might try to reach for my weapon, I'm prepared for that. But there's always that chance somebody gets a drop on me and takes it. I get it. I understand the concept of not, you know, carrying on the outer waistband. I'm prepared for that. Um, and all I can say is that if they get it, they better get it quick. Um, if not, they'll have something to deal with. But my other holster was good. I made it. It's still good. Um, I, I, it's about five years old on that holster. <clears throat> you can see it's starting to wear because I wear it every single day. And um, I made a new one just because I wanted to. There you go. I can and I did. <laughs> if anybody's got a P365 out there, Sig Sauer, and you want my old holster, you're welcome to it. Put your name down in the comments down there and um i'll send it to you uh and then um mr stevo robo stevo my friend further south here from us here in dallas um we talked about uh, making a holster for your smith and wesson if you still want that email me let me know um but let's go on here All right, so I started making a new wrap. And um, basically is the same uh, suede material on the outside, uh, but I used a inner um, red suede and embellished it with uh, the alligator skin uh, here and there uh, just to break up the uh, suede look of it all um, area for two pipes pouch over here for tobacco and a zippered area over here for lighter and pipe cleaners and all that good stuff whatever um let's go on there i am sewing stuff uh in place there's more now I played around y'all just for the hell of it and I put a little crown right here and you'll see that I think later on just to put some alligator skin over there on that red break it up uh, it was fun just did it hmm I took a ton of pictures of the same thing uh, okay and I guess I <laughs> In true fashion, um, there it is, basically, um, alligator uh, belt to go around it all. And the uh, belt buckle there with some embellishments of the alligator on the outside. There it is again. And this is basically the same dimensions as the pipe wrap that I made uh, and gave away. Mister uh, the Trickster from France won this one. Won that one. This is basically the same thing, uh, but just looks different. That's all. That is the inside, and uh, there's that area. I said I, I made a little crown to put right there. It's because this pipe wrap looked a little regal to me, so I went ahead and uh, put that there. Zippered pouch there, and a place for tobacco up top here. And then a cover to cover over the pipes uh, as alligator also. But it turned out real nice. Turned out just fine. Real fine. Uh, it's a little bulky when you get a number of items put in the wrap. Wrapped all up. Uh, but it's the way wraps are supposed to be, right? Okay, here's a little side note, y'all. <laughs> I also made my wife a new purse. 
I didn't know this was in my pictures. There you go. But we went to it, so we'll talk about it. Um, my wife picked out this special uh, leather. It's basically sheep skin that has been pressed to look like uh, snake skin. It's real nice leather, y'all. Real nice. And uh, I bought these uh, embellishments, the chain and the enclosure and everything, and made her this purse. Now, my wife is a purse connoisseur. And she said a purse of this caliber, per what she says, would go from anywhere from three to five hundred dollars in the store. Um, so I was like, well, that's nice for you. It's free. <laughs> so um, she was very proud to have it. This is the second purse I've made for her. And I end up saving myself a lot of money <laughs> by making it myself. But it turned out nice. She loved it. And that's all that matters. As long as mama's happy, I'm happy too. Um, I made her another purse. I don't have pictures of that. Um, but um, she went to go visit her sister in Arizona. I'm batching it, y'all, this week, just so you know. <laughs> um, and she went to go visit her sister. And the first thing she did was pack up this purse and said, I'm taking it so I can show it off. So... She's real proud of it, and I'm happy that she liked it. Uh, I didn't take pictures of the inside. I should have. Inside's got a real soft sheepskin suede on the inside that's a lighter color. Um, that is really nice. It really nice. Um, <clears throat> it all turned out really good. Turned out really good. She she likes it, and um, I was happy with the way it turned out. But let's get back out here. Anyways, that wrap that I made up, uh, that's going to go to Yousef. Though, for those of you that have been following my channel for a long time, you'll know that um, uh, I tried to send some stuff to Yousef. It never made it to him. I don't know where it went. We're going to try it again. So, Yousef, you give me an email, and uh, we'll get this wrap sent out to you. Stem, too. I was going to get in the garage this weekend and uh, start some new stems. We're going to make up some new cob stems. We'll be giving those away. And um, But, y'all, it got super freezing. See, this last Thursday, it was like 61 degrees. Beautiful day. And by today, well, actually yesterday, it was freezing cold. Froze over the water troughs for the animals in the back, everything. I had to leave the hose dripping in the back. If not, it would have froze up. And today, it's just damn cold, y'all. Super cold. Um, what is it right now? So according to the phone says that it's 19 degrees currently it was 16 degrees earlier yeah uh, it's really cold and water troughs are freezing over um caught my pool just in time turned the pump on because my pool was starting to freeze over i'm like good lord so i caught it start running it but it's really cold either way i was going to get in the garage like i said where all the tools are, where I would start my stem work, and then I need the finished product of the stem, I can bring it inside and finish it. But y'all, it was super cold in that garage, and I just kind of didn't want to do that <laughs> right now. Um, but we are going to get in the garage. I'm going to make up stems, probably uh, at least three or four of them, and we'll be giving those away. And um, uh, who knows, maybe I'll do a live... Uh, while I'm in the garage and y'all can watch me make these stems, turn them on the lathe and get them all drilled out and everything like that. Uh, I don't know. It's possible. If not, you know, for sure I'll take pictures and maybe a couple little videos and we'll show it off um, here on the channel before we give them away. But that that is what I did promise and that's what we're doing next. We're doing stems uh, before we go on to something else. Maybe like I said... 
I'll get into making some of these tobacco pouches. This one here is made by Peterson. Uh, by Lou of China. <laughs> Makes no sense, y'all. Um, Dublin, Ireland. Dublin, Ireland. My heritage, Ireland. Um, where Peterson makes their known pipes, their well-known pipes. But yet, certain parts <clears throat> of their products made in China. I, I don't, I don't get it. Wouldn't you be proud enough to say, I'm going to make, you know, if you're going to put the Peterson name on it, wouldn't you want it to be made in Dublin, Ireland right there? I don't know, y'all. Um, could you imagine getting a Savinelli pipe and it says made in China? I mean, everything is damn near made in China. Um, I tell people, I don't know if the United States makes anything anymore. The only thing we make in the United States is babies. Yeah, amongst other unsavory things like high taxes and laws that really are stupid. But I digress. Um, but yeah, Peterson, made in China. Um, that's a shame. That's a shame. But it's a nice pouch, regardless. I know there's good people in China, y'all, and they're all just trying to live like we are. Um, I just think that we put, in, we put too many eggs in one basket. The majority of the United States products come from China. Um, yeah, I mean, what happens if China gets pissed off with us? Or we get pissed off with China and we just tell them we don't want no more of your shit. Well, all of a sudden, everybody's got to look around and go, does anybody remember how to make shoes? Does, does anybody know how to make clothing? Uh, does, we need to dust off all those old machines from back in the day. Call those old guys back in out of retirement and have them teach us how to make things again. It, crazy. Crazy. I mean, I... I uh, yeah. We are starting to... You know, we do see things from other countries. Every once in a while, I see stuff from Pakistan, um, Vietnam, India... I actually kind of like a lot of products that come from India that look like they're well made. Um, I got to say my wife's saddle uh, for her horse uh, was made in India. And it's a good saddle, y'all. It's a really good saddle. Um, yeah, a lot of her other tack, you know, I made for her, but yeah, the saddle is a good deal. It got good reviews at the time. And it's made in India. And it's made really well. So a lot of countries make some good products. Make some good products. And, you know, that's how the world goes around. Everybody imports, exports their stuff. And um, I just think we need to spread the love. You know, not so much in one place. Um, everybody needs, needs we need, you know, we need to make sure everybody is allowed to um, make things. And we're allowed to send things to those places whatever um i just think that we put too many eggs in one basket and that's not good that's just not good and i'm sure y'all can see the truth in that other way um not looking too forward to the rest of this year y'all and i'm sure some of you can imagine uh, election years in the United States, especially the presidential election year, is just a mud-slinging, nasty time of year. People on the TVs, commercials, propaganda everywhere, even on YouTube you'll see it. Just all of your social media, just mud-slinging. This guy sucks. No, you suck. No, you suck. Vote for me instead. It, it, it's just... It's going to be terrible. It's going to be all up in your face. It's going to be hard not to see it. And so, yeah, election years, I don't look too forward to those, y'all, because it's just a bunch of mud sling and a bunch of junk. And they're all crooks as far as I'm concerned. You find the floatiest piece of shit in the toilet and you vote for it. 
Yeah, they're all crooks. And um, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Sooner or later, somewhere down the line, y'all, you have to pick a lane. You know, I try to stay out of political and religious conversations on this channel. Um, but things are bound to come out here and there. And um, I try to keep it to a minimum. Uh, but you have to pick a lane. You have to decide where you're at and you pick a lane. <clears throat> um, and uh, nowadays, you know, it's hard to stay and just say, I'm in the middle. Or it's hard to say that, well, I just don't vote at all. Well, if you don't vote at all, you have no say. Uh, you definitely can't bitch. Do not bitch. If you did not vote, do not bitch at all. Live with it. Suck it up. Embrace it. That's where you're sitting. If you did vote for a certain way and it went a different way, well, you have a right to stand up and say, hey, I had nothing to do with that. I didn't vote that way. And you're allowed to voice your opinion. But if you didn't vote, don't voice your opinion at all. Stay quiet. Shut up. It's just the way it goes, y'all. Um, so, you know, you do what's right, of course, according to your life and your desires and your wants, whatever you want. But definitely use your right. Here in the United States, we have... Very few rights left uh, when it comes to having our voice heard. And uh, voting is the ultimate. Uh, use that right and vote your conscience. Um, and hopefully, it, you know, it goes that way. Um, regardless, y'all, I just want this country, like any other country, uh, just to be at peace. Uh, for everyone to get along, and um, we can disagree. That's completely fine. Um, I just want everybody, I mean, honestly, y'all, I feel like a darn beauty pageant queen sitting up there going, I'd like world peace. <laughs> yeah, that's a great dream. Um, I hope that humanity gets to that point someday. Uh, the world is a beautiful place, y'all, no matter where you go. Beautiful place. I've been to a lot of the world. I've had the pleasure, the opportunities while serving in the military for over 20 years uh, to go to many places. And people are wonderful no matter where you go. Um, stereotypes are just blown away. Um, you know, you, you go with a preconceived idea well, Germans are all fat and all they do is drink beer all day long. <laughs> and then you get there and find out that's not the truth. You know, England, all the people there have terrible dental work. <laughs> yeah, they probably don't own toothbrushes. <laughs> that's not the case, y'all. Not the case. Um, you know, you go to France. Well, they hate America. No, 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 they don't. Um... You know, there's a lot of people that have their opinions, but they don't all hate in the United States. We're not the most loved country in the world right now. That's true. Um, but when you get down to talking to just the normal, everyday people, they're just people like you and I that just want to go to work, come home, kiss their family, have them something nice to eat. Enjoy a little bit of time before they go to sleep and then get back up and do it all over again. Just like you and I. No, no, no different. You know, I was top, you know, I was in the military. You don't talk to Russians. You know, if you see any Russians in certain areas and we came across certain times, um, don't, you know, you're not allowed to talk to them. Don't talk to them. You know, and they're, oh, you know, they're supposed to be, um, communists and and they're terrible and they hate america well i'm gonna tell you y'all that's not the case i have talked to russians um against what i was told 
And uh, I realized they're, like I said, they're just people like you and I just want to live. Uh, majority of the people, we have, we're all fine. It's governments, it's politicians, it's dictators out there with their dreams of conquering the world, conquering anything they can get their hands on. Those are the ones that make the world a not-so-nice place to be sometimes. But the general people of the world, y'all, they're good people. Good people everywhere you go. Um, I have enjoyed the company of many different people throughout the world and um, have a lot of good memories uh, of these people. And um, yeah, good stuff, y'all. Vote your conscience, no matter how it is. And um, I digress on that. Uh, but it's going to be hard to get away from that this year, y'all. It's just nature of the beast here um, during these years. Well, like I said, we're going to get into some stems. We're going to build stems up and give those away for cobs. Uh, Yusef, give me an email. Uh, Robo Stevo, give me an email if you want that gun holster. And don't forget, I got my old P365 holster. If somebody wants it, I'll send it to you. Still got lots of years to be you know used left in it. And um, either way, y'all, I'm going to try and stay warm here. I got to go back out and do my uh, evening feeding with the animals. Make sure their water troughs aren't frozen over. This morning I had to bust through all the ice to make sure they had water. Um, got things to do. Going to try and stay warm, have a little something to eat, and then start the new work week, y'all. I hope y'all uh, have good have had a good weekend. Um, and I hope your week coming up here um, is as good as it can be. Y'all, until next week, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you. Pack a bowl, my friend. And don't forget to pass the plan. Pack it up, my friend. And then we'll wind up and we'll smoke in the ashes in the end. Pack a bowl, my friend. me that blend, would you?